Okay, we figured out the probability that you'll eventually win or go broke uh, playing Gambler's Ruin, but there, there gets to be a question about what does eventually mean? Namely, what's the expected time that it takes to either reach your target or go broke, as the case may be? So let's look at that next. And it's approached by the same technique. It's going to turn out to be linear recurrences. So we're asking how many bets are expected till the gambler either hits his target or gets ruined. And the expected number of bets we can, uh, so we're interested in EN, which for shorthand uh, we will, will be an abbreviation for the expected number of bets when you start with N dollars. And this is expected number of bets till the game ends, either with uh, hitting the target or going broke. Well, we'll condition on the first bet as previously. The expected number uh, of steps till termination uh, starting with n dollars, given that you win the first bet, is simply one, uh, which is the first bet time, plus the further expected number of steps starting with n plus one. And likewise, the expected number of steps starting with n, given that you lose the first bet, is one for the first bet, plus the expected number of steps that it will further take starting with your new stake of n minus one. So by total expectation, what we conclude is that EN is the expectation of EN given the first bet times the probability of winning the first bet. Likewise, with losing the first bet and uh, the probability of losing the first bet. So you plug in the numbers and you get um, that EN is 1 plus EN plus 1 times P, the probability of winning the first bet, uh, plus 1 plus EN minus 1 times Q, the probability of losing the first bet. And then it's a linear recurrence. We solve the previous one for EN plus 1 in this explicit form. We get EN plus 1 is equal to a linear combination of the previous two values. And this one turns out to be a non-homogeneous linear recurrence. There's a minus 1 over P. That's just a constant. We know how to cover those. Uh, how to handle those. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to again skip the formal calculation of the solving linear recurrence because we know how to do that. And in the fair case, it turns out that uh, the formula that we get for the expected time turns into a surprisingly elegant result. Namely, it's n times t minus n in the fair case, which means that to rephrase it in words, it's the initial stake times the intended profit. Yeah. It's a very clean and elegant result. The expected time in the fair game uh, until you uh, uh, terminate, either with winning or going broke, uh, is uh, initial stake times intended profit. So for example, if you start with a dollar and you're aiming to reach $1,000, uh, you can expect to have to make 999 bets before the game ends. Even though starting with one dollar, there's a uh, there's a 50/50 chance in the in the fair game that you'll immediately go broke. Nevertheless, uh, that's only a 50/50 chance. And once you win the first bet, you got two dollars, and it makes it less likely that you're going to lose right away. And overall, it nets out perhaps unintuitively, that the expected number of steps is 999. Of course, you're almost surely going to go broke because of the previous result that your probability of reaching your target of 1,000 uh, when you start off with a dollar is only 1 in 1,000. But uh, it's going to take a long time for you to, to almost surely go broke. Now, this is a very... Uh, elegant and simple result, intuitive result of summarizing the expected time. There's got to be an intuitive proof of it that's other than cranking through uh, a linear recurrence that happens to have a double root. I haven't found one, and I leave that as a uh, as a problem for you to work on and think about. Come back to me if you can find a, a sort of intuitive elementary argument that doesn't crank through linear recurrences without providing any insight to this simple result of the expected time till the fair game ends. Now, a variation of Gambler's Ruin that turns out to model various physical situations is when you pretend the target is infinite. That is to say, you're going to keep playing until you go broke. Maybe you'll play forever if you never go broke. So it doesn't matter how much you have, you're just going to keep playing. And we can ask about what happens then. Uh, well, in the unfavorable game, ruin is certain. It turns out that the probability of ruin, and which we know, you see, the probability of ruin is greater than or equal to 1 minus the probability of winning. And the probability of winning was 1 over r to the intended profit. 
Well, in this case, the intended profit is infinite because the target is infinite. And the one over R was this number that is P over Q in the unfair case, where P is less than Q. So this number is less than one. And the probability of ruin is greater than or equal to one minus P over Q less than one to any finite power, which means that the probability of ruin is one. You're sure to go broke in the unfavorable game. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you analyze the recurrence and you ask how long it takes, if you start off with n dollars, the expected time to, uh, to surely lose, go broke, is about proportional to n, your initial stake. Um, what's weird is that in the fair game, it turns out that ruin is also certain, but the expected time for ruin is infinite. So this is a wonderfully, apparently contradictory situation. You're going to play a fair game starting off with some amount of money, um, any amount at all really, say one dollar or a million dollars, whichever you feel better about. And what I'm telling you is that no matter what you start off with, even if you start off with a million dollars and you keep playing forever in the fair game, you're eventually going to go broke. It's just the way it is. On the other hand, even if you start off with a dollar where it seems more likely that you're going to go broke uh, for sure, it still is going to take forever to go broke, at least in expectation. It's one of these weird cases where, we, where an infinite expectation turns up, and now we have to sort of jibe these two apparently contradictory things. How is it that ruin is certain, but it's going to take forever, so I sort of shouldn't worry about it? Well, uh, I'm going to let you back. crisp, intuitive explanation for it. But uh, there's no contradiction in those two statements. They both hold, uh, and they both follow rather easily from the calculations. Now, the proof that the expected time to ruin is a class problem where it's an elegant uh, intuitive proof that does not depend on linear recurrences. So you can actually get some insight into why it is infinite. In the favorable game, um, ruin is not certain, as a matter of fact. So this is where the, your, the bets are biased in your favor, then uh, even whether you start with a dollar or a million dollars or whatever, even starting with a small amount like a dollar, there's definitely a positive probability that you'll keep playing forever and never go broke. So that's another contrasting case.